It was an interesting moment um, between Tucker Carlson and Glenn Greenwald on Tucker's new show on X or Twitter, formerly known as Twitter, about the censorship that is currently going on against the pro-Palestinian movement here in the United States. Here's what they both had to say. What's so terrifying to me, though, is that the right, the American political right, which really was through this kind of weird transformation that's happened over the past dozen years, has become the lone defenders of the First Amendment. They've abandoned that in the last month, like instantly. So I think you could say, you know, I strongly support Israel. I strongly dislike Hamas. I'm, I'm rooting. For, maybe I think we should commit troops to the region. I mean, whatever. You can have any view you want. However, American citizens have a right to express their opinion, period. And that supersedes any other event in any other country. It's like that's a core right. And I don't hear many conservatives saying that. Uh, and so you sort of wonder, like, if they're not defending it, who will? I mean, there are people who have built their careers, Tucker, over the last five, six years, standing up and saying, we can't have cancel culture. We can't have censorship. College students aren't entitled to feelings of safety. We don't censor in order to protect people from views they find threatening, mocking the notion that minority groups are vulnerable and we have to censor in order to protect them. Turn on a dime. And now become the leading voice of saying, because American Jews feel unsafe, that's valid in a way that, say, claims from black people or LGBTs or Latinos aren't valid. And because of that, we need to censor. Show me the lie. Yeah. He's right. Uh, I'm glad to hear Tucker on that. It's a tragedy that that's not getting mainlined to the Fox News boomers and they're getting Jesse Waters instead. I can't even imagine what the hell is going on uh, over there. But it, it does show you a massive split, you know, in the conservative movement right now where for, you know, and I think Glenn's point is so important. It's what I was talking about in our A Block. When you adopt the language of safetyism, you immediately fail. And it's because it goes into the framework of like you deserve like complete emotional certitude and not to be able to be challenged. As Tucker said, if you're an American citizen, you can say anything that you want and should be protected by the law. Yeah. We should go out of our way, even the abhorrence. This is what the beauty of the ACLU case is that even the speech we find the worst, the most objectionable, out you know, outside the bounds of polite conversation, many standard deviations away, straight up Nazis. We still protect it because the precedent itself is so important. And unfortunately, actually, really what we've done is we are emboldening these campus apparatchiks to because now they can be like, well, you wanted us to call, you called us in to protect against the Hamas people. So next time there's some George Floyd BS, we're gonna do whatever we want whenever it comes to censoring uh, somebody or driving them off campus or posting their photo, be like, this is a person who didn't sign on. They didn't put up the black square. You know, how far away are we from that? But, I mean, it already happened. Yeah, And you yeah. know, I mean, college kids, that's yeah. one piece. Yeah, they're the, they're the freaking piece, idiots. But the piece, like, the piece that is more disturbing is where the nexus of um, censorship and state power yes, come into play. Absolutely. And so when you have, you know, Ron DeSantis out there, like the DOJ needs to investigate and um, actively going after these student groups, and also this really gross conflation of, I do not deny that there are people that are out there that are saying atrocious, directly anti-Semitic things. I think mm -hmm. it's disgusting. I think it needs to stop um, directly advocating or celebrating Hamas and the atrocities on October 7th. Disgusting, right? But there's also this conflation of anyone that has a critique of U.S. government policy or Israeli government policy as being an anti-Semite or being in uh, in collaboration or celebration of Hamas. And that's wrong and it's disgusting. And it's something the Biden administration is engaged in as well. I mean, they called calls for a ceasefire, a position held by two-thirds of Americans. They called that position repugnant, they likened people who are attending uh, pro-Palestinian protests, all of them, not just like the fringe extremists, to the neo-Nazis that marched in Charlottesville. <laughs> I, it's insane. And this is happening all over the, I mean, Republicans have gone all in. You just have to listen to the yeah. debate last night, aside from Vivek, mm -hmm. um, to hear that sort of language, although he also you know, goes pretty far in terms of condemning everybody who has any sort of a dissident view on this as well. He just doesn't want them to be censored or like arrested or whatever. But to go back to what is going to continue to be a consistent theme, 
Have we learned nothing after the war on terror? Have we learned nothing after our failed response to 9-11? Have we learned nothing about how dangerous it was to give the state so much power of surveillance, so much power of censorship, and say, and justify it all in the name of national security? I mean, that's effectively what we're doing here all over again and giving them all the tools that they could possibly need. And do you think it's just going to be used against the people you don't happen to like? No. Mm -hmm. Never stays in that one lane. The tools they acquired in the war on terror have been used against many different ideological groups. They have been consistently expanded over time, and we are just handing them even more power to weaponize those very same tools. I think you are absolutely correct. That's a great place to end it. Uh, we really appreciate all of you. We're just on a time crunch because we got Vivek Ramaswamy. We'll be posting that later, as we said, earliest for our premium subscribers. It's going to be posted as a separate interview and a separate podcast, so you can check your feed um, in a little bit. Uh, we're excited. We're about to go do it, so we'll see you later. Hey, guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right. We're subscriber funded. We're building something new. We want to replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.